Hi guys, Saloni this side and welcome back to our channel Codera. So this is the 41st video of our SQL tutorial series and in the last video of this series we discussed about the delete drop and truncate command. And if you want to watch this video then please check out the video link in the description box. So guys in today's video we will discuss about the transactional commands. And this video might have two parts because in this video we will also understand the acid properties. Because the acid properties are very important part of transactional commands. So in transactional commands we will discuss the following commands like start or begin transaction, commit command, rollback command, save point and rollback to command. And with this topic I will also share some SQL practice questions so that you can understand this topic in a much better way. So now first let's see what is transactional command. So guys we use this transactional commands for the management of the SQL transactions. Now the question is what is transaction? So the transactions are the sequence of one or more SQL operations. So for example insertion of records or the updation or the deletion of the records all these are the SQL operations and in the transaction these operations are performed as a single unit of work. So let's say we are executing three insert command and one delete command as a single unit of work then this is an example of transaction. So now let's understand the transaction with the real life example. So let's suppose here we have a bank account A and a bank account B. Now we want to transfer rupees 100 from account A to account B. So in order to transfer rupees 100 a transaction will take place between these two accounts. So first we will check the available balance of the account A. So we will check either the rupees 100 is available in the account A or not. And if the amount is available then only we can deduct rupees 100 from the account A. Otherwise the transaction will end because of insufficient amount. So let's say rupees 100 is available in the account A. So now after the deduction we will update the balance amount of the account A. Now next we will add rupees 100 to account B and in the last we will also update the balance of account B. So in the whole process we have performed operations like select and update as a single unit of work. So it is a transaction between account A and account B. So here you can see we are making multiple modification into bank accounts. And if the transaction makes multiple modifications into the database, two things can happen. Either all the modification is successful when the transaction is committed or all the modifications are undone when the transaction is rolled back. In other words, a transaction cannot be successful without completing each operation available in the set. It means if any statement or operation fails, the transaction cannot produce results. So guys, the primary goal of a SQL transaction is to ensure the consistency and the integrity of a database when multiple operations are being performed at the same time. So for ensuring consistency and integrity, a transaction must follow the ACID properties. So now let's get a brief introduction about the ACID properties. So in ACID properties, A stands for atomicity, C stands for consistency, I is for isolation and D stands for durability. So first we will understand atomicity. So guys in atomicity a transaction is treated as a single unit of work which means a transaction will be called a successful transaction if and only if all the queries or operation in that transaction is successful. If any single query fails then the entire transaction fails. Like when we transferring funds between accounts, either all the part of the transaction must succeed or none of them. For example, deducting funds from one account fails due to insufficient balance or any other error. The entire transaction will be rolled back and no changes will be made to any account. So the atomicity prevents partial updates and it maintains the consistency and the integrity of the data. So now our next acid property is consistency. 
So guys, consistency ensures that our database must be in a valid state before and after the transaction perform. Like in our bank example, consistency ensures that the total amount of money in the system remains constant. If the rupees 100 is transferred from one account to another, the total balance in the system should remain unchanged. So suppose before transaction account A has 5000 and account B has 3000. So total we have rupees 8000 in the system. Now after transferring rupees 100 from account A to account B, the remaining balance of account A is 4900 and the remaining balance of account B is 3100. So after the transfer, the total amount in the system is still 8000. So guys, we have consistent data before and after the transaction. So in any transaction, consistency is very important as it preserves the correctness of the data. So now after the consistency, let's understand about the isolation. So guys, isolation makes sure that the execution of the concurrent transaction must be independent of each other. Like in our bank account example, isolation ensures that while one transaction is transferring funds between accounts and any other transaction also accessing the same account, then these two transactions must be unaffected by each other. Like here, we are transferring rupees 100 from account A to account B. But at the same time, some account C is also transferring rupees 200 to account A and account B is also transferring rupees 150 to account D. So here, total three transactions are taking place concurrently. So guys, the updates made by the transaction must be isolated from other transaction until it is committed. So isolation ensures that the transactions must be independent of each other. Now suppose if any transaction fails and the data is not updated properly, then we will get the false value of remaining balance of different accounts. So guys, the updates made by the transaction must be isolated from other transactions until it is committed. So it will prevent interference or the data corruption caused by the concurrent transactions. That's why the isolation is very important. Now our last asset property is durability. So durability ensures that once a transaction is committed, which means once a transaction is permanently saved in a database, then its effects are permanent and they will survive the system failures also. Like in the bank example, durability ensures that once the transaction is successfully committed, then the changes made to the bank account balance are durable, even in the case of system crash or failure. Now suppose after transferring rupees 100 from account A to account B, suddenly your mobile phone shut down or you lost your internet connection. Then in such cases, the transfer you made must be durable and your updated balance must be intact. It should not be changed because of such failures. So guys, durability ensures that once a transaction is committed, its effects are permanent. That means the changes are permanently saved in the database. So guys, these were the asset properties which must be followed by a SQL transaction. So to perform transaction in SQL, we have some transactional commands, which we will discuss in the next part. So guys, that's all about this video and in the next video we will cover all the transactional commands. So if you like this video and you found this video useful then please hit the like button and subscribe our channel. Thank you so much for watching.